Hi, I'm Blake McDowell. Uh, I work at the National Museum of African American and History and Culture at the Smithsonian Institution, where I run our AV preservation uh, work. And we're going to talk about a project we started, I don't know, maybe eight months ago, seriously, but I've but, uh, been working on a bit longer than that, on camera cards. Um, so these things, um, which you're all probably familiar with in some capacity. Um, these things nold. Uh, they look they look nice, all lined up too. Um, and, but they yield um, things everyone else is also probably familiar with too. Uh, specific content uh, organization, directory organization, file organization, specific files made depending on what type of camera by what manufacturer you're using. Um, various types of things such as this. Uh, so we found that um, these were, were cumbersome and the important content of the files, I'm just gonna read this, was not easily accessible and required maintaining the card structure for the content to be readable, usually by editing programs such as Adobe and, and things of that sort, which what these cards, I guess, were mostly made for. That was their uh, you know, intended use. But in short, we were not receiving, we being the, the archive, so to speak, uh, we're not receiving what we wanted. So we began researching into changing the, what we were receiving into something more suitable for our purposes within our systems. Um, namely, we wanted the ability to concatenate video files together uh, in a logical order based on content. We wanted to rewrap these files to an MKV container or at least have the option to do so because that was our sort of target container format. Um, embed desired data from the original sidecard files into, newly, into the newly concatenated files plus uh, additional user-defined data such as um, perhaps description of the content um, and document the original structure of the card. But reversibility was not a goal. This was a um, destructive process perhaps, yeah, um, which was what we wanted. So I'm gonna pass this over to Chai Lin because she's really done all the work for the most part in terms of testing and running these scripts, so uh, here you go. Uh, hello, I'm Chai Lin. I work with Blake at the NAMAC um, uh, as a digital archive specialist. Um, so for all the purpose that Blake just stated, we have, we're very fortunate to work with Dave to help us develop a script that can do, or that is attempting to do all that. Um, today we have a working script that can do uh, most of it and uh, we're still refining it and uh, we're still refining it and update it. And this is an excerpt of the help text of the script um, it's an excerpt because we're still actively developing it and so we're constantly revising and updating it. Um, so the important part of this part is the right now the script can recognize these uh, type of cameras, uh, the videos that's recorded by these type of cameras. <coughs> Uh, in the museum's purpose, we use the first two mostly, the AVCHD, like Canon C100 and Canon C300. Um, for the purpose today, we'll demo on the uh, Canon C300 camera. And with this three uh, usage uh, for the, from the script, the camera cards, which is just concatenating all the video files into one uh, chronologically ordered files. And then uh, the F flag that will enable us to rewrap it into um, a Matroska file for our purpose, um, other formats maybe. <laughs> it's just a variable that goes to FMPEG, so it would just use the code, the extension you said. So. <laughs> um, and then the uh, uh, the AMP flag will allow us to only select the clips that is relevant to each other and then package them together. Um, so this is a C300 cards that we will receive. The file structure will look like this. So you will have the file generated by the camera. It's, um, the MX files are the clips, but you can see that it's, it's very hard to pick out. Um, so for our script, this is for just, if you just type in camera cards, um, so our script is written in bash and then it's gonna, it's tested and run in the Mac OS terminal. 
Um, so in the terminal, if you just type in camera cards, um, the script will prompt you to drop in an input, uh, your input package, which is the top level of the camera cards. Um, and then it will analyze, you can see that it will analyze the type of, uh, the, all the video, it will pick out all the video files already. And then it will prompt you to type in a media identifier. So if you have a naming convention of your objects, this is where you would put in. Um, and then it will, and last it will prompt you to do, uh, to do a, a output destination. So, uh, in this, I just, so I just put in a folder. Um, the camera cards will, will sort the file and concatenate it into a folder that also is your identifier. So. Um, and then the script will start running. Uh, this is the result we will get. So you can see that it has a log that, that recorded the, the data that is running the script. And, and then it will sort the original files, camera original files into this folder. And then it will run the reports for all the media clips. And it will, and then it will run the uh, stream hash and then the um, ND5 checksum. And then lastly, you can see the object that is still in its original format, uh, MXF. Um, for our next uh, options that we can do is to rewrap it in the Matroska uh, file. So it's basically doing the same thing. And then um, the results you can see are also the same, except the final object is in MKV file. This is just to, this is just to put them together so you can see it. Um, lastly, I want to show you the other thing that this script would do for us is to uh, allows you to select parts from the camera cards that that's because sometimes you will record like for our purpose like interviews of the same person but um, or like different people but so and then the camera will split it into different pieces, so uh, this will allow you to select the only the relevant clips and then concatenate them together and create this package. So uh, you can see that, so you, you type in M with the flag N, uh, capital N, and then the parts that you want, and the rest are the same and it will run magically. Um, the other thing that, the other camera the, we use a lot in the museum is the Canon C100. You can see that this is very different structure than the C300. And in developing it, I think that it, every camera card is kind of unique. And so they've had to do like several, they, they've had to do like specific things to develop it, which he can tell you more about it in a little bit. <laughs> um, but before, before that, I wanted to show you this one last thing that we can, that we also developed from hoping to embed the uh, metadata into our Matroska files. Uh, this thing, this little tool called MKV Note. So well, it's, it's in the same suite that, that we develop. And uh, for, to do that, we just type in MKV Note and the file, that, a Matroska file that you wanted to embed that out with, and uh, the script will open a, a text editor on your computer, and this is where you can, it will already, it will tell you which, the, which are the uh, metadata that's already in with the file, and then you can type in all the other. These are the tags that we come up with, but we're still in develop and will figure more out or less. And so I type in, it, you can see, you can see it. In the content description, the NTTW7 demo. And once you save this file and you hit continue with the script and run the media info, and you can see that in the bottom of the general section, the, this tag will show up. So that's it for now. Um, all of the scripts that I just show are all in our GitHub. This is the link. And then we'll let Dave talk about cool. the development. Um, 
I, I started working with camera cards uh, maybe back in 2004 when I got a job at Democracy Now. Um, and I, at first they were just using like DV tapes and, and they'd go out and they'd film all day and they'd come back with a one DV tape. But then once they got these digital cameras, they'd go out and shoot all day and come back with like four or 500 files. Um, I remember like one of the more obnoxious ones was the Panasonic P2 camera <laughs> and because uh, it would record each audio track and video track to a separate file and then have like a bunch of still image files that would like be the preview in the camera when you're using its navigation menu. And then all the XML it would just put in separate files for some reason not in the MXF itself. So there was just this massive like pile of files um, that was kind of replacing what would be a single tape with a sticker on it. And um, I was like, I don't know if this is total progress here, but uh, <laughs> like, um, I don't know. And then, so, so like when I was getting into it, um, I was hearing about this, this phrase, uh, respect the fonds, uh, which is like this archival principle about maintaining the original order. Um, so I don't know, in the archive I worked at, we'd get all these like messy collections. Like one time I got a, um, like the kind of like black bag you get from a bodega when you're getting chips and a soda, but it was just filled with unlabeled mini DV tapes. And I was like, how much respect do I actually have to provide to the collection in the original way the archive receives it? Um, so, you know, but Viv, at the beginning, I was trying to be a bit of a purist about digital preservation. I was like, all right, I should just manage these, P these P2 files or these camera files in, in the form that they come in. Um, but then just finding that it's really difficult to use them. A lot of editors, like some editors would like them if they were familiar with using them, but um, it, you know, often it be, kind of became unmanageable to work with uh, the diversity of these different formats and putting them back together. A lot of these uh, companies that would make these cameras would give you some type of demo software product that would read the card and basically like restructure it into a different file. So you could put a camera card in of a few dozen files, it would spit out a couple of QuickTime files for you. It would just kind of do this like repackaging. Um, but then as those camera card formats would become obsolete, that software would get abandoned. So you know, right now trying to maintain old versions of operating systems so I can run early Sony and Panasonic abandoned software to repackage these materials was getting more and more difficult. So it just seemed more and more like archivists need to develop their own tools and maintain their own tools to deal with these formats. Um, so I, I was starting to think about, you know, just completely disrespecting it, because instead of a mountain of files, I can just make a, a cool Matroska file. Um, instead of a huge list of like 20 uh, clips that all might be a couple frames long or an hour long, I can just have one big file that, um, basically like chapters all those clips together into one continuous recording. Um, obviously there's some challenges of this because you know somebody can go out into the field and record and decide that they want to switch from NTSC to PAL and four channel to two channel in the middle of the recording, um, which I found a lot of journalists I worked with seemed to like to do randomly, just like flip switches in the middle of the recordings to make it more inconsistent. Um, but I, you know, I, th I thought there is some value um, in not maintaining the original order in which we get this mountain of files, but instead like repackaging it. Um, so this is one of the examples of, of one of the metadata files that comes from one of these cards. Like you can see in here, it has like the serial number of the camera, the lens. Uh, there's no GPS unit on this particular camera, but cameras could track like where the camera is when it's starting to make the, the shot. Uh, in, in starting to work with this kind of material, um, in, in, a, in a large collection, I found this information was really helpful to group content together. Because like when I'm getting a bunch of like trash bags of DV tapes or just like data dumps from production staff, often I want to make some sense out of it, even though all the stickers fell off or nothing's labeled and there's no file names. And using things like the date it was shot and the serial number of the camera would at least help group things into the order in which they were created. Um, you know, so everything that is recorded January 1st, 2000, which apparently was a, an incredibly popular time for recording, could all be grouped together. Um, so for uh, this MXF file, like this serial number of the camera is in the XML, but when you dig into the metadata of the video files, it's not there. It has some information about the model. Um, 
of the camera, but if, you know, if one organization just bought a bunch of these Mark II cameras and sent them all out to, to shoot, if you just kept the, the MXFs, you wouldn't be able to distinguish what came from what camera, um, you know, which you know, can be a helpful way to sort of group content together. So like in the course of this project, one of the things underway is like trying to make a particular mapping for each type of camera card and how to get that most pertinent metadata into a rewrapped file. Um, you know, so you can go from his, this to a single one. Um, and then, you know, sort of giving back a little bit of acknowledge to respecting original order. Um, even though we're rewrapping a bunch of content into a new container and, and often going from like a mountain of files down to just one or a couple files, um, I think it's, it's important for a number of reasons to just use stream copy in FFmpeg whenever we can. So that way we're just getting the original encoding from a pile of clips into a Matroska file, even if you know, we're concatenating all these frames as they go in. Um, th this helps prevent any type of generational loss you might have of reformatting, and also um, just makes the process go enormous, enormously faster because you're not trying to like transcode a bunch of like HD or 4K material. Um, but in the script, we have to make a couple, a couple exceptions to this based on, based on the combination of input and output. Um, for instance, a lot of the MPEG-2 transport streams that the cameras record will use this format that FFmpeg uh, identifies as PCM Blu-ray, but it's not supported in the Matroska container. So in, in that case, we just do a like PCM Blu-ray to PCM 24-bit um, encoding, which you know is it's, it's a lossless kind of reordering of the data. But in a couple cases, a couple edge cases, we do have to avoid stream copy in repackaging this material. Um, you know, so the goal is to have an archive that just kind of gives off a vibe like this. Uh, everything's orderly and cute and usable. Um, brings comfort to us all. Thanks. I don't know if you're a chef or chef. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, December 11th, um, camera card convening uh, at Smithsonian. Um, this comes from Crystal Sanchez, who you all probably know or should. Um, and it's going to be, oh God, I don't even know this, um, one to five, yeah. Um, and it's in collaboration with the Holocaust Museum in DC. So um, come on down, sign up. Uh, I didn't get that email, so I don't know how anyone else is supposed to get it, but. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're in DC on um, December 11th in the afternoon, uh, sign up and come on down and enjoy talking about this more in depth for about four hours. We'll take questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> questions for our presenters? Any question? How come? Uh. Thank you for this. Uh, I, I, because. I also have this use case. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that I personally found it a bit confusing that you name it like um, camera card. What was the wording on the first few slides? Because it's like for me, it's just SD cards, and the camera has its structure. Do you want us to name it SD cards? No, 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 because no, no, we can change it. <laughs> <laughs> so you should have written down what it was. Anyways, I would just want to say thank you. I think we just used yeah, camera. Like yeah, for me, it, it read like, ah, it, it's a different hardware. But it's like a structure type. The card itself is just an SD card. Yeah. I, I, this is not a criticism. Yes, it's yes, just yes, like, yes, from yeah. me, a perception yeah. like, you could put ah, any data oh my god, there's different right. camera cards. No, there's not. It's different like layouts on an SD card, right? Or am I? You're 100% right. OK. Um, so that should, actually we should, was a We question. should change that. <laughs> Make make a suggestion and we'll we'll incorporate it. <laughs> Later. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, thank you. Maybe I overheard it, but uh, how do you gather that uh, metadata information from the shooting? You you get it like uh, already from from cards. You get the the cards themselves, or you somehow collaborate with the uh, filmmakers and they send it to you, for example? Um, there's some in the cards and then also uh, much of what we use at the museum, at least currently, to, for our use case, comes from like our oral history department. And so there is a, a bunch of extra 
data that that is not necessarily you know comes with the file so to speak but is will be in the art cataloging system Would you mind to use the microphone? Because otherwise, can you? But yes, there's a lot in the file itself too. I'm sorry. How do, how do you get those? Uh, I mean, uh, do you get the information from the people who, uh, for example, shot something and decide to ar archive those files, and they also give you the metadata or? What what, what metadata specifically? The the stuff. Oh yeah, the the this descriptive content would come from uh, the um, videographers or or historian. The stuff that Dave was showing, like camera card, mo camera model, and stuff, is all in those sidecar files and repackaged into the concatenated file and embedded. Dave, do you mind? Uh, yeah. Do you use the microphone? Because otherwise, they cannot listen. On oh, the sorry, I was just asking. Uh, Blake, like when, when somebody is coming to the archive with the camera cards that they shot, like besides just dumping off bags of cards, like what kind of forms or data are you gathering from the person who made the card? About like what's on it? Us specifically, um, we don't. That is generated, but our cataloging team would largely handle that. We have, you know, departments and stuff. It's a large organization. So uh, all of that would be done s usually separate from from this type of work um, it could a lot are generated and it comes in at a somewhat high volume so at first they wanted us to do some of that and we were kind of like yeah no <laughs> yeah I think when, uh, when we receive the files we will um, like pretty organized in a way that like these are the collections and then these are the um, kind of a more descriptive metadata that we have, and then the script will be able to extract the technical metadata from the files, like what type of cameras and like the frames and everything, and we use Media Info or other tools to extract those too. And that's what we were saying for the MKV node is we wanted to also embed some of the data so it doesn't, it wasn't too far away from like it, that you always have to find a cataloging ca uh, record to find what this is. We also have a naming convention for our file names that, that hopefully provides some um, clue <laughs> to, or to find another uh, discovery path to, to find what the file is. Hi, thank you for the, the speech. Uh, I was wondering if the, all this documentation about the structures of the card is somewhere or is just in your mind <laughs> or now in the script and if it can be put in a, in a repository or somewhere like formats, just information. Um. I mean, we started a Google Drive for sharing different type of camera cards. Um, there's clearly more out there than we're aware of and clearly more than the five that this um, script currently works with. But there's there's a lot of other people that have done work on this. Crystal's done some work on it. Um, there's a paper by Claire Fox that uh, talks about this. Dave's clearly done a lot of work on it. Um, I think it's one of these projects where the more people want to use it, the clearly the better it will become because um, we were focused very much on our use cases, which are rather narrow, to be honest. Yeah, my, my, my question is, if you, do, if you intend to go to put it in Copter or, or some kind of repository where everything is centralized and we can share the, those different structures, like we, like we share file formats, we can share those structures in the same way? Um. <coughs> We don't have that currently other than that Google Drive, but uh, that's something I think that could come out of this camera card convening on December 11th. Uh, that would be really good. Um, it's certainly needed, but um, we have not undertaken that at the museum specifically as we've just been focusing really on um, our, use, our uses at the moment. Uh, but as we're Finalizing those, yeah, I mean, we'd love to have more people involved and set up a place to document all of this. Maybe Dave wants to. Any other question? Thank you very much, then. Massive applause.